Visiting Bahamas coming up tonight on our news. Family members make a gruesome discovery off Faith Avenue South this morning. the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Vonnie Tude. Topping news tonight, the nation bid farewell to a Bahamian patriot and former politician today. Former cabinet minister and House Speaker Sir Arlington Butler was laid to rest after an emotional funeral where he was remembered as a pioneering politician who loved his country and his family. Jasmine Brown reports. From the foyer of the House of Assembly, where he once served as the first speaker in an independent Bahamas, Sir Arlington Butler left the halls of Parliament for the final time. Flanked by uniformed officers and draped in the Bahamian flag, the coffin carrying his body made its way to Christ Church Cathedral this morning as spectators looked on. Inside the church, Sir Arlington's granddaughter Asari Knowles Mackey was overcome with emotion as she performed a solo in honor of her great-grandfather. Cannot express my gratitude. Sir Arlington passed away on Thursday, November 9th in hospital. Today, he received the second tier of government funerals, which is given to former cabinet ministers and serving members of parliament. The funeral came amongst an ongoing public feud between Sir Arlington's widow Hazel Lady Butler and his children. Today, his son Arlington recalled the last time he spoke with his father. And I held his hand for an hour, and then he quietly slipped off to sleep. All the things that I'd done for my father and all the things that he had done for me, that is the one most endearing moment that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Because in that moment, in his fear of transitioning to the other side, of his pain that he was suffering, he could find comfort in just holding my hand. So today, Daddy, I say, you're going home to Mama. And you're going to see Sheila shortly, and you all got some things to sort out. But I know you will. And one day, you will look down upon us, and you will see generations beyond me. And we would have passed down those same spirits that you so loved, the global village, the International Olympic Committee spirit, as well as the Bahamian spirit and the spirit and commitment to family. And that's all I have to say. He was a great man. Also attending today's service was Governor General Dame Marguerite Penling, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, Opposition Leader Philip Brave Davis, former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram, cabinet ministers, parliamentarians, and members of the judiciary. Minnis said the Butler family lost a father and husband, but the nation lost a hero. You have lost a husband and father. We have all lost a friend and colleague. We have also lost a Bahamian patriot and politician who loved his country and who gave his Bahama land his full measure of devotion. Meanwhile, Davis spoke of Sir Arlington's commitment to his family. Until his death, he loved his wife, Hazel, and his children, Avon, Arlington, Cara, and Crystal, he, and their children. He loved his siblings, and he had many friends that he held dear. And to all of you, I offer my heartfelt condolences. Sir Ali was a great man. Sir Arlington was buried at Lakeview Memorial Gardens and Mausoleums on John F. Kennedy Drive. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown.
Canon Norman Lightbourne had some firm words for the Butler family during Sir Arlington's funeral as he chided them for what he termed airing the family's dirty linen. Lightbourne insisted family was everything to Sir Arlington, who would not be pleased with the ongoing feud following his death. I pray, I pray that my dear members, that today will be a day of healing for all of you. That today will be a day of great anointing and outpouring of God's love into your hearts as you settle your differences. The feud arose after his children reportedly wrote to his widow demanding that she vacate the matrimonial home and have no involvement in the planning of his funeral. Last Thursday, Supreme Court Justice Cheryl Grant Thompson ordered Lady Butler be allowed to reside in the home and deemed her the individual responsible for his funeral. Lady Butler has also enlisted a police detail for her security during that funeral. On Wednesday, Sir Arlington's children announced that they had relinquished any direct involvement in his funeral arrangement. Father Lightborn urged them to look to God for strength. But this afternoon, I beg of all of us, and I beg of the Butler family, that all of us look to God. God is the one who indeed will help us in our time of trouble. He is the one who will give us the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding to deal with any situation, whether it come from the east or the west or the north or the south, God can provide us with the answer. We look to God as our source of strength in the days and weeks. Just one day after the Prime Minister's assertion that crime and the fear of crime are down, family members of an elderly man were left heartbroken as his body was discovered in his home this morning. Police believe he was stabbed to death. A 21-year-old male relative is in custody assisting with that investigation. Giorgio Bain has the details. A man in his 70s becomes the country's latest murder victim as neighbors make a gruesome discovery, leaving family members and friends confused as to why this would happen. Press liaison officer Shanta Nold gave these brief details on the scene. Shortly after 9 a.m. this morning, we received reports that a lifeless body was found in a home at Ambergris Street off Faith Avenue. Officers responded to this location and confirmed the information that a man was in his home and appeared to have been deceased. EMS personnel was called. They made a check of the victim and confirmed that he was dead. Knowles confirmed on the scene that the victim appeared to have suffered from multiple stab wounds. However, there were no signs of forced entry into the home. Neighbors in this area noticed that one of their neighbors had not, uh, was not sitting in his yard as he usually d does. They became concerned. They uh, knocked on his door, and after they did not get a response, they called family members who gained entry into the house and made this discovery. Family members identified the victim as 76-year-old Leon Sweeting. Sweeting's family was attempting to surprise him yesterday for Thanksgiving by having his son Glenn fly in from the United States to see his father. However, when they called Sweeting to attend the surprise Thanksgiving dinner last night, he told his family it was too late. It's like, my, it's so late. Y'all bring my food tomorrow. Um, not knowing that he was here. He was going to be here tomorrow. My, my cousin came to bring him the food. That's when they find out. He was gone. His son, Glenn Sweeting, who traveled just to surprise his father, was in shock. He decided to surprise his dad this morning at his home. When he didn't get an answer, he looked through the window and saw the blood-soaked walls. He then ran to call the police. And I came here this morning to just, you know, shoot the breeze because he didn't make it. He didn't come with us to have Thanksgiving at my sister's house last night, so. His niece says he was like a father to her. She says when she pulled through the corner and saw the crime scene tape and heard that her uncle had died, she assumed he had passed away naturally or had a heart attack. She says she could never imagine him being stabbed to death. I am so lost because, like I said, he is such a gentle person, very giving very calm, you know, soft-spoken. He don't bother anyone. Sweeting's cousin, Dennis Johnson, fought back tears as he did his best to describe his lifelong friend to our news. This one hit, this one hit hard at home.
sweeting a retiree who worked in Lyford Key, spent his days in his yard, which we understand was his pride and joy, fixing small engine appliances and sitting under the mango tree in his yard playing dominoes with a group of men that called themselves the old guys. He had a very good personality. He was friendly with everybody in this neighborhood. And every day, every morning he'll get out and do his yard. His yard is one of the best yard, best kept yard around on this side of uh, through this road. Family members say Sweeting didn't deserve to die like this. No, especially not him. Thank you so much. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie O'Bain. Her Majesty's coroner is investigating the death of a man who was shot and killed by police in Fox Hill last night. Authorities say the officers feared for their lives and opened fire on the man after he pointed a weapon at them. This incident comes amid a rise in gun violence in the Fox Hill community in recent months. We will saturate this area uh, to take that fear away and to identify criminals who continue to reap havoc in this community uh, with uh, decent people. As police continue to saturate the streets of Fox Hill in an effort to curb the level of violence in this historic community, officer in charge of criminal investigations, Assistant Commissioner Clayton Fernander says officers found themselves face to face with an alleged gunman last night. Fernander says it all began after 10 p.m. when information led police officers to an apartment complex on Abner Street. As they got into the yard, a young man exit the apartment building um, with a handgun. Uh, he ran to the rear of this apartment building. Officers uh, give chase. As they got to the rear of the apartment building, uh, the young man pointed the gun at the officers, officers being in fear for their lives, and persons who may have been in the general area uh, fired uh, shots. Uh, the young man was uh, shot to the body. The man was transported to Princess Margaret Hospital where he was pronounced dead. It is unclear what information led officers to that apartment, but the assistant commissioner says the firearm recovered from the scene is illegal and police are familiar with the suspect. Him, a pistol was recovered uh, from uh, this individual. He is known uh, to the police. Uh, uh, he is known uh, to us at uh, this present time, the coroner. Uh, who has since visited the scene as well. Uh, the matter is uh, under active investigation uh, with uh, the coroner and her team. This police-involved shooting comes about two months after police launched a special operation in Fox Hill in response to an alarming number of murders and shooting incidents in the area. And we decide that we will camp out in this area and we will flush out the criminals who continue who continue in the lifestyle of crime, and it will not stop. We will continue until we have a calm uh, in uh, this area. Fernander applauded those residents who continue to assist police with their crime-fighting efforts. We will win this war together. Still to come on our news, government moves to beef up security at the new Providence landfill, plus cases of TV suspected at another public school. Stay tuned.